when I started working on a quill power feed, I was hoping I would find a video on YouTube of someone working on a machine pretty similar to mine. Uh, the closest video I found was from Stefan Gottswinner. He did a fantastic quill feed. I drew on those ideas, but I wanted to show my, my process. Hopefully this will help someone else that's looking at doing a similar project. So let's zoom in and get a closer look here. The main body of the system is this little gearhead motor. It seemed to have the right specs. I bought it off of Amazon. I'll include the purchase link in this video. It's a very inexpensive motor. It's about 15 bucks, so it's a great starting point. The other components that I purchased were the timing pulleys here. I have this one that's on the snout of the motor, and then I have this one here that's on the, the, graduated, the graduated ring on the mill's quill assembly here. This belt also comes as a part of that kit. Really no modification has to be done to the timing gear on the nose of the motor. There's a small sleeve in there just to get the diameter to match the motor. Uh, I just had some plastic sheeting that I used and that seemed to be fine. I think the plastic also gives a little bit of cushion to the system, which doesn't hurt. The lower timing gear here was bored on the lathe to a press fit, and that was just pushed onto the existing snout on this, on this graduated ring. Normally, what would be happening, without the system in place, without the clutch engaged, is what you see here. The hand wheel is just turning the mechanism and moving the quill up and down. You can set the graduation here, and normally what you would do is you would just spin the hand wheel and this would move along with it. What I've done is I've decoupled this from the hand wheel by taking the set screw out and I've replaced it with a clutch mechanism that I'll show some more pictures of in an image that I'll insert next. So if we take a look in the drawing, we can get a better idea of what's going on inside. Uh, some of the features of the drawing are a little bit more sim simplified. Uh, I just wanted to make this easy to understand. The red section is supposed to denote the body of the casting, kind of where the shaft enters the housing that it goes into. I thought that would be easier than modeling the whole thing just to get the point across about this mechanism. The clutch is pretty straightforward. I have a 200 thousandths hole bored pretty much through most of the length of the worm shaft. And then the front section of that is opened up and threaded to quarter 20. There's the just under 200 thou section of the push rod that also has a threaded back section that's attached to that little threaded knob that's coming out of the front of the quill fine, fine feed wheel. Uh, the point of that has a 60 degree cone, and then there's a hole cross drilled through the worm shaft I think that's also 200 thousandths. And there are two brass pegs inside of that hole that also have 60 degree cones. So the idea here is that when you tighten the knob, that push rod moves deeper into the body of the, the worm shaft and it forces those little brass pegs outward. And they lock, essentially, that, that uh, graduated dial to the body of the worm shaft. And that graduated dial has the timing gear press fit on it. So as the, the motor spins the timing gear, when you engage that clutch, those little brass pins are actually what are providing the coupling action between the worm shaft and the graduated ring. In normal operation, the graduated ring, ring is sort of two pieces, and there's the part that spins with the numbers, and then there's the main body of it, and those are attached uh, with a set screw. But, of course, I removed that, and I went with my own system, which uses this little screw and pin style clutch. The way to engage the system is to tighten the new, the new little three-sided knob that comes out of the quill. And then there's a power source up top with a PWM speed controller that's driving the motor. The control electronics really aren't crucial. I happen to have a little box up top where I'm controlling some other parts of the mill, quill light and X power feed and such. But if you didn't want to do that and you just wanted to build this as a standalone unit, you could of course build that assembly into the enclosure. The little box is really straightforward 
It's a six hole bolt circle that just mates up directly to the motor. There's a little removable back here. The piece there with the bulkhead fitting comes off so that if I need to replace the motor, I can do that. And the entire assembly is simply on some, let me zoom in here, simply on some slots with some socket head cap screws that I just drilled and tapped for into the head of the mill. Basically from this line downward, there's there's no oil, there's no anything that you need to run in, that you need to worry about running into if you drill into the body of this particular mill. Yours might, leave, yours might be a little bit different. Uh, this is a Central Machinery ZAY7032G. Uh, it's a great mill. I haven't had any problems with it. Uh, so far, it's been fantastic to use. This system, like I said, is, is coupled and decoupled with the clutch here that I had the, the picture of inserted not too, not too long ago in the video. Uh, and that's kind of the idea. When the clutch isn't engaged, the motor is just simply driving this graduated ring. When you tighten the knob here, the clutch engages and you're coupling this graduated ring to the worm shaft and that's driving the fine feet on the quill. I wanted to finish out here with some video of using the power down feed in conjunction with the boring head. That's really what I built it for. Boring is a process of making a cut, making an adjustment, you have a really slow feed rate in most cases, so it's nice to be able to just set that, press the button, and let the machine do its thing. Thank you to everybody that watched till this point. If anyone has any questions, I will try to answer each and every one of you in the comments below. And again, thank you so much for watching my video. I hope someone found this helpful.